is not true. Tell me I've been lied to. Crying is the night you. We shouldn't even be here. But we are. It's like in the great stories. The ones that really mattered. Full of darkness and danger they were. And sometimes you didn't want to know the end. Because how could the end ever be happy? 
How could the world go back to the way it was when so much bad had happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this shadow. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come. And when the sun shines, it'll shine out the clearer. Those were the stories that stayed with you. That meant something. Even if you were too small to understand what. But now, I believe I do understand. I know now. Folk in those stories had lots of chances of turning back, only they didn't. They kept going. Because they were holding on to something. That there's still good in this world. And it's worth fighting for. Everyone wants a happy ending, right? But it doesn't always end that way. Maybe this time. I'm hoping if you play this back, it's in celebration. I hope families are reunited. I hope we get it back like something of the normal version of the planet has been restored. If there ever was such a thing, God, what a world. Universe now. If you would have told me that we weren't alone, let alone to this extent, I wouldn't have been surprised, but come on. The epic forces of dark and light has come into play. And for better or worse, that's the reality that Morgan's going to have to find a way to grow up in. So I thought I'd record a little greeting in case of an untimely death on my part. I mean, not that death at any time isn't always untimely. This whole time travel thing, we're going to try to pull it off tomorrow. It's got me scratching my head about the survivability of it all. Then again, that's a hero gig. Part of the time journey is in the end. What am I even tripping for? Everything is going to work exactly the way it's supposed to. I love you, D-1000. Yeah? I used to help a couple horses myself. I use them for hunting. I do a lot of hunting. Deer mostly. Although, I got a couple bear last year. Yup. They were good ponies. Hunting ponies. I had to train a special, you know. I had to sell them to get these wheels and a jeep. I also have a jeep pickup with four wheel drive and it's got a gun rack and I use that for hunting mostly. Do I get to go home now? But lady, I told you everything was okay. My dad didn't mean to get mad. It was my fault. I went in the room to get a pencil to do my homework. I shouldn't have bothered him. That's why he made me stay out in the snow. He probably forgot I was still out there. I know he was going to let me back in. He tells me all the time if I behave, he wouldn't have to hit. He didn't do this. I fell down. I was playing. It doesn't hurt anyway, lady. I have to go. My dad's going to think bad things. Like, I ran away from home. I wish my neighbour never called you. I wish m my dad always says to people, mind their own business. Do I get to go now? I can't say. I can't say. Don't you get it? The longer I'm here, the more he's going to hurt me. I have to go back now before it gets worse. Good evening, London. Allow me to first apologize for this interruption. I do, like many of you, appreciate the comforts of everyday routine, the security of the familiar, the tranquility of repetition. I enjoy them as much as any lady, but in the spirit of commemoration, thereby those important events of the past usually associate with someone's death or the end of some awful bloody struggle or a celebration of a nice holiday. I thought we could mark this June the 3rd a day that is sadly no longer remembered by taking some time out of our daily lives to sit down and have a nice little chat. 
There are those, of course, who do not want us to speak. I suspect even now, orders are being shouted into telephones and men with guns will soon be on their way. Why? Because while the truncheon may be used in lieu of conversation, words will always retain their power. Words offer the means to meaning. And for those who will listen, the enunciation of truth. And the truth is, there is something terribly wrong with this country. Isn't there? Cruelty and injustice, intolerance and oppression. And where once you had the freedom to object, to think and speak as you saw fit? You now have censors and systems of surveillance coercing your conformity and solicing your submission. How did this happen? Who's to blame? Well, certainly there are those who are far more responsible than others, and they will be held accountable. But again, truth be told, if you're looking for the guilty, you need only to look into a mirror. <laughs> hmm. I know why you did it. I know you were afraid. Who wouldn't be? War, terror, disease. There was a myriad of problems which conspired to corrupt you of your reason and rob you of your common sense. Fear got the best of you, and in your panic, you turned to our now- High Chancellor Adam Sutler. He promised you order. He promised you peace. And all he demanded in return was your silent, obedient consent. Hmm. Last night, I sought to destroy that silence. Last night, I destroyed the old Bailey to remind this country of what it has forgotten. More than 400 years ago, a great citizen wished to embed the 3rd of June forever in our memory. His hope was to remind that the world of fairness, justice, and freedom are more than words. They are perspectives. So, if you see nothing, if this crime of the government has remained unknown to you, then I suggest you allow the 3rd of June to pass unmarked. But if you see what I see, if you seek as I seek, and if you feel as I feel, then I ask you to stand me beside me one year from tonight outside the gates of Parliament, and we will give them a third of June that will never, ever be forgotten. I gotta take this, hold on. Veda, how's my favorite Sith? Uh, whoa, 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 just slow down. What? What do you mean they blew up the Death Star? F Who's they? What the hell is an aluminum falcon? Okay, okay, so, so who's left? Are you f***ing me? Well, where are you? Wait a sec, wait, you've been flying around for two weeks trying to get a signal? Oh god, you must smell like feet wrapped in leathery burnt bacon. 
Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I thought my Dark Lord of the Sith could protect a small thermal exhaust port that's only two meters wide. The thing wasn't even fully paid off yet. Do you, do you have any idea what this is going to do for my credit? Hang on, I got another call. What? I'm very busy right now. Oh. Oh, well. Well, where are they going? Okay, uh... Just get me a turkey club. Uh, coleslaw, I guess. Um, I'm not even gonna eat it. Well, what are you getting? Yeah, see, I always order the wrong thing. Nah, nah, I'll just stick with that. Okay, bye. What? Oh, a uh, cherry coke. Thanks. Sorry about that. What? Oh, oh, just rebuild it? Oh yeah, that'd be a real original. And who's gonna give me a loan, jackhole? You? Y you got an ATM and a torso light bright? Now get your seven foot two asthmatic ass back here, or I'm gonna tell everyone what a whiny bitch you are about Potamati or Panda Bear or whatever the hell her name is. Oh, jeez, he's crying. Hey, 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 come on, come on, don't do that. Just Look, I'm just dealing with a lot of crap right now. The Death Star blown up by a bunch of teenagers, you know? I didn't mean to snap. Oh, j j just get back here. Okay. Okay, bye. Uh, uh, I love you too. Look. Can't stop me. I've made up my mind. I've thought about this for a long time, and what else do I have to do? It's my decision. You're gonna need to respect that. I'm gonna shave my head. I'm gonna do it, and whatever happens, happens. I will live with it because I cannot live with. This, oh my goodness, look at it, it is driving me mental. Look, you know, you know I'm right. And I understand that some may feel that hairdressers are not an essential service, but I am here to tell you they are wrong. It is essential that I have someone deal with this. And now we're back to the essential, non-essential argument, which no one is going to solve. So it is up to me. I'm the one. Okay. I'm going to go. I'm going to raise a pair of clippers. I'm going to live with the consequences. But I understand that some may feel this decision is not important. There are larger issues the world is dealing with. Good hair has a place in this world, okay? My hair has a place in this world. Okay. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Don't try and stop me. Okay. Okay, here I go. Wish me luck. God doesn't love or care about you. If he did, you wouldn't be here begging for my help. I've been to the other side, and believe me, there is nothing, I repeat, nothing there waiting for you. There's no party with all your ancestors there welcoming you, no red man with a tail and a pitchfork waiting to make your life truly a living hell, no choir of angels or anything like that. This whole idea of God and salvation is a part of a spoonful of lies your mommy and daddy shoved down your throat when you were just another annoying little thing that took up space. It's not lupus. The spineless ass kisser that told you it was lupus was wrong, as wrong as he was when he earned his PhD in medicine. It's never lupus. You actually have a very serious case of encephalitis, which was most likely caused by rabies, which you probably got during that weekend you decided not to listen to your teacher and do your homework. 
But instead, you wanted to pet the cutest, fluffiest little animal you could find. But that adorable little creature was actually hiding something that could kill you. Yes, you heard me. You are going to die. Because you weren't smart enough to come straight to a doctor so you might have a chance to live. But no, you decided the brown liquid in the red plastic cups and white dust all over the Sour Patch Kids that shouldn't be there look like more fun. So yes, go pray to the invisible almighty that put you in this position. I hope you enjoy your so-called afterlife. Hey, are you even listening to me? I don't have to say really. Three minutes to the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. And either we heal as a team or we're gonna crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, until we're finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me. And we can stay here and get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell, one inch at a time. Now I can't do it for you. I'm too old. I look around and I see all these young faces, and I think, I've made every wrong choice a middle-aged man can make. I pissed away my money, believe it or not. And I've chased away people who love me. And lately, I can't even stand the face I see in the mirror anymore. You know, once you get old in life, that's when you get things taken from you. That's, that's just part of life. When you start losing stuff, that's when you truly find out who you are. Life's a game of inches. So is football, because either game, life, or football, the margin of an error is so small. I mean, one half step too early, too late, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, and you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of every game, every minute, and every second. On this team, we fight for the inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us into pieces for that inch. We claw with our fingernails for an inch because we know when we add up all those inches it makes the difference between winning and losing. The difference between living and dying. I'll tell you this. In any fight, this is the guy who's willing to go and die for that inch. And I know if I'm going to live any longer, it's because I'm still willing to live and die for that inch. Because that's what living is. It's the six inches in front of your face. Now I can't make you do it. You gotta look at the guy next to you. And look at him. Because he knows when it comes down, you're gonna do the same for him. That's a team, gentlemen. And either we heal now, or we crumble. That's football, guys. Now what are we gonna do? Hear that? That's the sound of the Ford Motor Company out of business. In 1899, my grandfather, Henry By God Ford, was walking home from Edison Illumination after working a double shift. He was ruminating. That morning, he had himself an idea that changed the world. 65 years and 47 million automobiles later, what shall be his legacy? Getting it in the tailpipe from a Chevy Impala. Here's what I want you to do. Walk home. While you're walking, I want you to ruminate. Man comes to my office with an idea. That man keeps his job. The rest of you second best losers. Stay home. You don't belong at Ford. Did you just say sorry for my loss? What the hell is wrong with you? you know, it's only been a week since I got the call. Still kind of feel like nothing's changed. Oh, I've had a lot of time to think. Ah, well. I always knew at some point I'd lose him. Wouldn't have guessed it'd be this soon, though. Still remember the last thing I got to say to him on the phone. 
Actually, no, I don't think this weekend's gonna work. Got tons of work to catch up on. Maybe some other time. Some other time. It's perfect, isn't it? I mean, there's always some other time. You know, to think I could have heard his voice, seen his face, one more time. It's awfully pretty, all this, but it's a backwards world. Tell me, when was the last time you saw your family? No, I mean saw your family. Not FaceTime, not called them on the cell phone or texted them. When was the last time you saw your family? And you said you're having trouble in the relationship? Yeah, what do you guys do? Do the two of you work out your problems like adults? Solve them in a mature way? Nope. All you do is change your relationship status and post some passive-aggressive bullshit on your stories. You know, there's all too many people in this world like you and me. People who just don't seem to understand that this is going to end. I'm not saying you don't know you're going to die. You're too smart for that. But I don't think you quite understand just what it means to die. If you did, I imagine you'd be spending a whole lot more of your time doing good things, not worrying about so much. A whole lot less doing the bad. Because of this, you're growing lazy. Yeah, it's not hard to see how lazy you've become. <laughs> Tell me, when was the last time you really stood still? Stood still. So still you could see. So still you could see the color of green on the leaves. So still you could hear the birds in the trees. So still you could feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. Hell, I bet you can't even tell me the last time you had a conversation you really cared about. You know, you spend so much of your time worrying about the future. And when you're not doing that, you're regretting every single mistake you've ever made in the past. You never sit still to live in the only part of your life that's ever gonna matter, ever has mattered. Right now. Not a year from now, not tomorrow, not yesterday, not five years ago, no. Right now. You know, if I could go back and do one more thing, just one more thing, you know what I'd do? I'd try and memorize what every little bit of his face looked like. The way he smiled, the way he laughed. I'll even try and remember the way he looked when I ticked him off. He was my dad. And he meant more to me than, or more than I ever showed him. Although I thought I did. I thought I tried. Looking back, I didn't do enough. Nowhere near it. But there and then, I really convinced myself that I was doing everything I could. I really convinced myself that I was trying. But hell, what's it even mean to try? In this world, it's pretty much just do or fail, right? That time I failed. Look, I knew him well. And he wouldn't want me to be like this. He'd want me to live life to its fullest. Not spend my time worrying about the future or regretting my past. No. But how? How do I move on when the only thing I want to do is go back? I don't know. Surprisingly, I don't have the answer to that one. Life doesn't want to give me second chances. But then there's you. The sorry son of a bitch with the second chance I never got. Look, kid. I can't make you do the right thing. I can lead the way, but you're the one who's got to walk through the door. I trust you'll do what's right.
I got nothing left to lose. Nothing can hurt me anymore. <laughs> My life is nothing but a comedy. Comedy is subjective, Murray. Isn't that what they say? All of you, the system that knows so much, you decide what's right or wrong. The same way you decide what's funny or not. I killed those guys because they were awful. Everybody's awful these days. It's enough to make anyone crazy. Besides, they couldn't carry a tune to save their lives. Oh, why is everybody so upset about these guys? If it was me dying on the sidewalk, you'd walk right over me. I pass you every day and you don't notice me. But these guys, what, because Thomas Wayne went and cried about them on TV? Have you seen what it's like out there, Murray? Do you ever actually leave the studio? Everyone just yells, shouts, and screams at each other. Nobody's civil anymore. Nobody thinks about what it's like to be the other guy. You think that men like Thomas Wayne ever think what it's like to be someone like me? To be someone other than themselves? They don't! They think we'll just sit there and take it like good little boys that we will werewolf and go wild! And you're awful too, Murray. Playing my video. Inviting me on the show. You just wanted to make fun of me. You're just like the rest of them. <laughs> How about another joke, Murray? What do you get when you cross a mentally ill owner with a society that abandons him and treats him like trash? I'll tell you what you get. You get what you deserve. And always remember, that's life! <laughs>
sorry There's no 